of the common objections I hear to Christianity from atheists runs like this. Christianity is just a psychological projection. The reason that you Christians believe in God is because it makes you feel good, because you're psychologically weak. You don't have the self-reliance to get through life without belief in some kind of cosmic sky daddy, the fairy in the sky, the invisible friend who's there to hold your hand and make you feel okay. Religion is just a psychological crutch. How would I respond? Well, the first thing I'd want to say is this, just because belief in God makes me feel good and gives me comfort doesn't tell you whether or not God exists. You cannot leap directly from how we feel about something to the reality or the falsehood of the thing. Let me illustrate. There are many things that make me feel good. The idea of chocolate makes me feel good. The idea of mountain views makes me feel good. The idea of miniature roller skating elephants makes me feel quite good. But just because I like the idea of those three things doesn't tell you which two are real and which one is false. To discover that, you would need to look a bit deeper. You can't leap from how we feel about something to the truth or the falsehood of it. But there's a further problem with trying to launch psychological missiles against religion for atheists, and it's this. We can turn the psychological argument around and fling it right back at atheism. One of the leading philosophers, atheist philosophers, writing today is Thomas Nagel. He once wrote this in a book. He said, it's not that I don't believe in God, it's that I don't want there to be a God. I don't want the universe to be like that. That's a very strident statement. And my question for Professor Nagel would be, could it just be possible that your hatred and dislike of God runs so deeply that your atheism has emerged as a psychological projection. You have wish fulfilled God out of existence. In other words, we can use the same argument against atheism. Christians are just people afraid of the dark, say atheists. Well, I just respond, atheists are people who are afraid of the light. Neither of those statements really helps you. You cannot get from how we feel about something to whether or not it exists. You actually need to investigate and follow the evidence where it leads. But one final thought. If Christianity were wish fulfillment, I do wonder if it would be a darn sight easier. If I was going to invent God, if God was just a projection of my psychology, I'm pretty certain I would come up with a God whose role was really to make me feel good and happy, affirm all of my prejudices and preferences, tell me that everything was going to be okay, and make moral commands that were so easy I could follow them with both hands tied behind my back. But that's not Christianity. Christianity is tough, and it's hard, and it's costly. I'm called to follow God, to serve him with my heart, my mind and my soul. Take up your cross daily and follow follow me, said Jesus. There is a cost to Christianity that is so high that makes me think it can't possibly be wish fulfillment. I could have wished for something much easier. You see, my challenge to both my atheist friends and my Christian friends is if the God that you believe in or the God you disbelieve in really just looks like a larger version of you, The God you are thinking and wrestling with is not the God of the Bible, and you need to look again.